It is haul out day. Didn't expect that. But look at the bottom. It is so dirty. Come on, look at it. So the barnacles below the anode are having a hard time breathing and I'm not sorry. So how hard is that? That's impossible. You think we can do this without going bankrupt? I want to kill myself. When he's up there preparing food, getting the last things so we can go because the yard closes at 8. It is haul out day. <laughs> Alex is uh, working stuff outside. I think he's cleaning up. <sighs> we're gonna go into the marina in like half an hour and then we're gonna be hauled out in 45. So it's still dark outside and the sun will come up around the time that we actually get out. So that'll be exciting. Are you excited about the haul out? Very. Yeah? Yeah, we're driving into the berth in the night can't see you, you're pitch black. There Maybe you go. it wasn't smart to do the earliest in the morning. I'll oh, we'll be fine. Yeah, right. We'll be fine. Where to Sherry? This is blue juice, over. Stay on the left on the right. side of the green. Go, go in in the middle. Go this way. Yeah, yeah. In the middle, and then you approach. Yeah, so I stay. Rechts, raus, rot. Yeah, yeah. Grün so is. Keep the green one on my right. Yes. Lift up! <laughs> Alex is picking up the anchor. Somebody took out 30 meters. We got some nice lights now. So we're gonna drive into the fuel pontoon first and that is where they told us to wait for further instructions. So that's what we'll do today. Wait for instructions. Great. Great up. I'm very nervous, I'm kind of excited and kind of nervous. And I just realized I have the same outfit as I had when we lifted back in one and a half years ago. That's how much I changed my wardrobe. <laughs> Here we go. It was really exciting because uh, this is so big. Like the, Freaking walls are so high because of its, I think it's low tide, so. See? We are actually getting hoisted with the boat. Didn't expect that, but also, I don't know how to get out of here anyways. Pretty exciting. I think he actually just said that they don't have enough gasoline in it. <laughs> so I think they have to now go and make sure that the, the crane can actually move the boat to the slip. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was exciting though, huh? Yeah. They took us with them on the boats because, well, it's quite hard. It's really deep because I think it's low tide. I think it's like six, seven meters or something. So that was quite exciting. Yeah. That's cool. But now we're just hanging there. But look at the bottom, it is so dirty. Come on, look at it. Look at the keel. Oh. The good thing is that because we took all the barnacles off, there really aren't that much barnacles. It's just mostly like growth. So I guess that's a pro. You can still see where we did not do the peel completely. Yeah. But that's really too hard. We got some pretty rusty parts here too. When we were on the yard in Greece, we just had the one cradle to keep blue in place. 
Here in Puerto Cherry, they actually added about eight or even ten extra struts all around. Apparently, there have been some pretty heavy storms causing some boats to fall over in the past. And therefore, now we got many poles firmly slammed under Blue's butt to make sure we stay upright. You see how low the water is when yeah. you look down here. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Look at it. You can see it on the rocks, like a two meter difference. Ta da! I like being on the dry dock. I don't know why. So, we have markers for lifting here and they hit it perfectly look at that they nailed it they nailed it can recommend on the front not so much but apparently that doesn't matter because most of the weight is uh, lifted on the stern belt and this is just to level it out so it all went well we have a lot of frail and a lot to clean huh so here we have the prop anode and the collar you maybe remember attaching the collar in valencia last winter the last dive of the season expect beautiful underwater footage that goes around the shaft behind the prop and then just closes up here let's see if i freeze to death you can do it uh, it's all right i can see it it's good there you go Excellent. can you give me the brush the bronze brush it was covered with a layer of some paint that anode needs contact with the shaft, not with the paint of the shaft. So I scrubbed everything away. Okay. I'm such a good filmmaker. <laughs> oh, that's good. But we're gonna change that one for sure. So we just talked to the guys who are gonna clean the hull and do some jobs on the boat and uh, we asked them about the, the shaft, the shaft yeah. and the, the play in the rudder but that's fine thank god and in the shaft it's like the, the gland is super tight and everything's great so you just push it from the bottom and see if it moves and it doesn't really so that's good news. And the main reason we wonder is because and we never showed this in a video we got a line in the front like three weeks into our sailing. Oh my uh, god. Yeah, we stopped filming after that. <laughs> yeah, we and have we some friends on board and... Uh, Maybe it's time to for a flashback of that episode. Yeah. Welcome back. It was exciting and a bit scary, but in the end it turned out fine. We got a diver to check it later and Oh yeah, maybe like, it's time for a flashback. After like a month. Came out. So at least there's more out. Now we're waiting for the verdict. So Ken just fixed as much of our prop that we could. So I'm gonna go for a swim now, real quick, and then shower, and then we're gonna go off to. Oh, I forgot the island again. What's the name of the island we're going? Castellos Mostos. That one, yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> so yeah, there we do. But now we can see there's still some rope in, well, between the shaft and the boat. It's good, like it centers the shaft, it's what we heard. Yeah, it's it's a what nice the diver said. An extra seal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna take that out now, finally, after, well, one and a half years, I guess. I don't know if I want to take it out, otherwise we have play in it. We don't have a problem now, now that it's in there. Are you okay crossing the Atlantic? No, we're taking it out. Okay, fine. Look at that. Three layers. Last one, before that, and the first one. So at least three layers of fouling. 
and and half of them are now gone. Well, look at the holes in it though. Look all the way down. Yeah. There's the jack out. And here too. And there too. Oh. Down to the jack out. Down to the jack out. Watching the guys spray off all the nasty green gunk from Blue's bottom was very satisfying until it revealed the anti-fouling. The damage done by the barnacles quickly became all too visible and it wasn't looking very pretty. Unless you are into abstract arts, of course. We decided to ask the professionals for some advice, but he splattered our hope within seconds. This anti-fouling was one of the worst he had seen. So yeah, his conclusion, take all the anti-fouling off down to the gel coat. Uh, yeah. come again? You ready? I am ready. Ready? Go! Anything happen? There you go. Okay, now stop and put on protection clothes. Okay, fine. Here you got clothes. One. That's for painting, we don't need that. Are you sure? That's the only one we have, yeah. No. Ask Kourou, he said he was covered from head to toe. You need to put that on when you do that, including a mask and everything. Okay. Can't get around it. Then? The gloves are downstairs, right? Yeah. Do you have face masks? I have one, yeah. Do you have a goggles? No. Here you got glasses. Yep. Face mask. Okay. Um, that's it. Let's do it. <laughs> so how hard is that? That's impossible. <laughs> we won't be able to do that. You barely left a scratch. It's impossible. You're trying a different spot to uh, see if that's easier? I'm trying to see if it's possible. <laughs> it's uh, not, it's literally impossible. You can do it. Wait, I'll try to. It's been a crazy day. We worked on the rudder. It doesn't look done, but it kind of is. Everything's stripped down to the gel coat and this, honestly, I can't get it off. It's a crazy job. Then Mandy did some hull, which actually looks quite good. This one's also already off, you know, it doesn't look like it. I don't know what we're gonna do with the prop. I tried my best on the keel and you can see some spots over there, here, there. But everything seems to stick so well that I don't really know what to do. I mean the flaky parts are kind of a no-brainer, you take those off and, but everything else... If you use the scrapey tool and you don't put enough pressure on it, the paint doesn't flake off, it just gets more and more compressed and flat and thin and then it's impossible. It's literally impossible to take it off. And I wonder if it's actually then necessary, if it's so well adhesed to the hull and flat and without any rough edges. We, I can't, we, we'll be here for weeks if we take everything off that way. So I have a feeling of, uh, I feel a bit overwhelmed can't sleep on the boat so we took an apartment we're gonna go there by cab because it's an hour walking it's all not ideal so we didn't expect to do all of this work we just thought like put a bit of primer somewhere and then anti-foul it and go back into the water next gonna next day is gonna be challenging that was really cool huh yeah we got a ride to town yeah. which is really cool but on the other hand it was so far that I really don't know how yeah, to Yeah, we do drove this. so long. Fuck. I really don't know how to how to get back to the boat tomorrow. Yeah. 
we went to the, the parking lot because it said assigned taxi. <laughs> and we figured maybe there's a cab there, but I don't know, there was just a sign and no cabs and no number. So I went onto the parking lot, there was a guy in a car and I said, so can you, I have a question, so how does this work? Like, can we call a cab and there's no bus, right? He's like, oh, I don't know, I'm not from here. I said, you have to go into town, so. He said, oh, oh, yeah, but I can just bring you. So just come on in and I'll just drive you. So he drove us and that was uh, pretty sweet. Yeah. That was really sweet, yeah. So, uh, I think Let's we made go. it to the apartment. <sighs> so it's the next morning now. <laughs> and uh, it's quite early, still dark outside, about seven. And we are going to go back to the boatyard. It's about a one hour walk and there is still no bus. And the only bike rental shop that we hoped would be around the corner is actually around the corner, but it doesn't open till 10. So if we have to wait until 10, rent a bike, go over there, it'll be like 11. We don't want to be that late, so we're going to go walk today and see if we maybe find a different way of getting back here again tonight. We were so beat last night, physically and mentally, that we uh, just decided to go straight to bed. On the way, or at the heart, we'll tell you uh, what happened yesterday and uh, what we're going to do with that, because it's been a bit of a day with surprises, I'd say. Mm -hmm. Alex is very tired and he's still <laughs> adjusting to the idea of um, what we have to do. So let's go back to the yard and uh, we'll show you. How come you made it before sunrise? Mm. The Toro the control guy just drove by and he recognized us, so he took us. <laughs> yeah. He is that. Not a problem. He was driving a car, so we got here real quick. Lucky, really lucky. We're really lucky. Another 10 days to be lucky. Yeah. <laughs> We're just gonna wing it like this and hope every time somebody takes us, right? Yeah. So here we are. This is our view. This is our life now. This is our life now. So I said before that we will explain what happened. And um, we went to this yard because it was relatively cheap to haul in and out and relatively cheap I mean like half the price of anywhere else so we couldn't stay on the boat for that money but we thought we would just you know sand it a bit put a new layer of anti fouling on and then dry it and go back in turns out the hull is just looking so bad we cannot just put a new layer of anti fouling on it's just not going to work there's too many holes there's like you can see four or five different layers all the way down to the gel coat at some point so um, the guy here advised us to take everything off and then redo everything and we contemplated for a long time thought of different options and I don't think we really had a different choice than doing and that means that if we don't manage to get it smooth somehow we will keep losing the two three knots that we've been losing all the time and then we pay like six seven hundred euros to fix the boat and then there's not really any benefit, so that also feels like a waste of money. But the problem is that now we uh, have to scrape it all off, which uh, goes really slow. I don't know if we're bad at it, because I asked the guy before. <laughs> After we spend about five hours on two square meters, he said, yeah, yeah, like, this is how you do it, and he showed us. And with him it looked so easy, he went so fast. And Okay, so the new technique helps a little bit, we go a bit faster, but because our hull is so flat, everything is straight above your head to work. So it is impossible to put that much force on it all the time. And we're physically just not able to do it. I <laughs> think we are very weak people. So I don't know, we might take four days doing that because I really don't see how we can do it faster. And we have nobody here that can help us because they're all busy with the fishing boat. Yeah, so we don't have any epoxy primer. We don't have enough empty fouling for two layers. We can't find the one that we have already, except for in Valencia, which is uh, 800 kilometers to rise, forth and back. And then we don't even have the epoxy primer yet. So then we end up paying one and a half, I don't know, 2,000 euros for just a layer of empty fouling. That hurts a lot and I'm also not really sure if we can afford that right now. We are losing hundreds of euros by the day it feels. So yeah. 
So today we're just going to keep stretching and I don't know. Hope the other problems just solve themselves by the end of the day. <laughs> How's it going, Knivel? You think we can do this without going bankrupt? I want to kill myself. This uh, in this case, we don't, we don't, we can't even pay for help. The uh, worst timing ever. Kind. The worst place ever. Yeah. We're on a schedule to leave because we can't afford a hotel and a yard at the same time. And this is what we do. <laughs> this is it. Yeah, that's so great. All right, enough complaining. I guess we established that the protagonists are in a sticky situation. Act one, complete. Next week, we see some silver linings and we freaking get things done. And it is because of a few people that stepped in back then that we were actually able to uh, finish this chapter. So an especially a big thank you to Ryan and Todd for being so incredibly generous. That really helped us out big time. Yeah. In the bigger scheme of things, we're just starting out and we're kind of proud where this is going right now. We know that over the course of this endeavor, people, friends as well as complete strangers invested in us. So also this month, we would like to give a big thank you to all of our new patrons. We are really grateful and we will try to pay it forward in any way that we can. There are a lot of good things happening when you try to see the little things and we work really hard to grow ourselves into a position where we are able to give back and hopefully have a positive influence on the world. Thank you for watching, it means the world to us. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Bye. Bye. I think we are uh, slowly coming to terms with the work ahead of us.